So my next planted project is a very basic 10 gallon tank that I picked up at a local fish store. Um, this is my fish area. It's really nothing to be speak of. Um, but I've gone ahead and I'm using some stainless steel shelving that I obtained at um, one of the local box hardware stores. This particular unit, uh, the box says will hold up to 500 pounds, I believe. This is stainless steel, three shelves, so it's going to give me plenty of storage for shelving for storage. And just to prove that it can hold a lot of water, this is a duplicate one. I apologize, the lights are not on. This particular tank is a five gallon planted aquarium with a shot, kind of a shop light painted blue uh, with a 25 watt LED light bulb. Um, it's got that. And then on the second shelf, uh, I keep bumblebee gobies and a three gallon tank. Both of these tanks are from Deep Blue. I then keep a wide variety of fish foods on the second shelf. And these fish are going back outside come spring. They're just kept in Sterilite plastic storage containers that I picked up at a local dollar store. Um, they do have lids. I could modify the lids, but I just tend to keep them open. Uh, the right tank or storage has zebra fish in it so I'm not too worried about uh, heating that unit. This side has uh, about a dozen, you can't really see them, uh, gold white clouds and this is where all my excessive plants go or plants that are going to be used for uh, this upcoming project. This particular tank is run by a 50 watt heater and a sponge filter. This, these two particular tanks get about a 40 to 50 percent water change on a weekly basis and so far they have survived the winter here and they've been in the house since uh, the end actually the beginning of October and I unfortunately can't put them back outside because we have about two feet of snow out there right now but hopefully very soon. So, for this project, I have decided to use Dragonstone, which I have located at my local fish store at a really good price of about $4.99 a pound. One of the problems with Dragonstone is it does tend to be a little dirty. So I have found a really good way of cleaning this and prepping it for the any aquarium. What I tend to do is I take a rock this is this stuff has already been cleaned I've already used my method on it and what I do is I get a bucket and I fill it up with hot water from the tap I let the rock soak overnight and then what I do is I just go in here and I swish it around and what this tends to do is to get all of the clay and the dirt that is within the pits of the rock to be easily dislodged for cleaning. And I usually find that one roughly uh, 10 hour period with a couple of good swishes in the bucket will cause the rock to become clean. And this way here, you don't have to worry about getting a, damaging your rock and, and scraping it. And as you can see, um, I mean, there's very little dust in here and whatever is in here is really not going to make a difference when I go ahead to, um, fill the tank with water. Um, I'm suspecting that the substrate's going to cause some, uh, detritus to be in the water, but it should filter out very quickly. And so that's how I clean Dragonstone. Very simple. A little patience and as I always say keep the method simple and you'll get better results so for this current project I have chosen to use 
this product as the substrate in a 10 gallon tank. As you can see, I've already got one rock placed. I'm trying. I'm, I'm still designing. I'm trying to plan this all out. Um, what I'm a little concerned about is whether or not this particular container is going to be able to fulfill the needs of getting the substrate at the correct level, or if I'm going to need more. And at the cost of this particular container, um, which I took the price off. Uh, for certain reasons. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be worth it uh, price wise. It's going to be, it's a little bit more expensive than the Fluval Stratum. Um, but I'm really interested in it because this is a ceramic based material that is supposedly not supposed to break down, unlike the Fluval product. We'll see. We'll see. Alright. Well, I apologize for the reflectiveness of the glass uh, and bad lighting. It's just the basement here does not have great lighting. But I've gone ahead and I have emptied the entire contents of this substrate into a 10 gallon aquarium here. And it's going to be hard to see. I apologize. However, if you can at least see my finger here, you can see that it goes up to, oh, at least a little above the first joint. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed um, because I think by the time I get done uh, with the rock layout and moving the substrate into position, um, I'm actually going to have enough for what I am planning for this aquarium. Um, so, yeah, um, I will tell you as I emptied out this material from the package, I'm going to go up here so I don't lose any. Um, <clears throat> there was very little dust, and I suspect that when I go to fill this aquarium up, um, I think the water is going to be crisp pretty clean and I'm thinking that uh, by tomorrow morning um, we will have a crystal clear aquarium ready for phase two of uh, planting the tanks. Um, let me just go over the uh, filtration system I decided to try this here is the Cascade uh, 455 from Penplax. Um, it, it looks like a decent filter. I like the fact that uh, much like the Zoomed, uh, it's gonna be hard to see here, but you get, hopefully you can catch it up here, the spray bar. And this tank's a little low. This tank will be going uh, through a cleaning today. Um, but that's one of the features I liked about this as compared to the cost of this I originally got this on Amazon for I think it was around $38 around Christmas time I went back online looking for them and they were up again to about 60 or $70 this particular unit I found on Amazon uh, believe it or not it was for uh, $8.99 and I said well you know why not so we're going to give this baby a try. I have a heater for this tank. It's not yet installed. I'm going to finish up the rock work here. I'm not exactly sure if that's going to be the final position of this particular piece or not. I'm going to play with it. Um, I'm not in a rush to get this done. But uh, yeah, so things are looking good. And I'm actually pretty impressed that this uh, container, which was nine pounds 4.08 kilograms of uh samurai soil from whoop there goes the package uh caribbean sea actually um filled filled that tank to a decent substrate level
So I just finished filling and planting the project. The filter has been running for about 10 minutes and as you can see the uh, cloudiness, even with filling it, uh, was very, very minimal. I am quite impressed by this product. Um, and actually planting plants into the substrate was very easy. Uh, because of the weight of the product, it actually helps anchor the plants down into the substrate. So hopefully bubbles will disappear in a while. I'm not too worried about that. The heater's installed and working. Plants are in and we will do a review of the substrate and uh, I'll let you know. That's it. So let's talk about the substrates that I used um, in my tanks. So we're all, for those of you who have used this, this is uh, Fluval Stratum. This is what it looks like wet. Um, and this is what it looks like dry. You can hopefully catch the glistening of the moisture. You can see how it kind of sticks together. Um, I don't have, I didn't take too much of a dry sample. This is pretty much the um, consistency of it coming out of the manufacturer's bag. So this is, um, Blue ball stratum. This is uh, wet. I'm sorry. This is wet and this is dry. Or about the consistency of it coming out of the uh, manufacturer's packaging. This is the Caribbean Sea. Fluval, I mean, sorry, Caribbean Sea Samurai Soil. You can see that in its dry form, it just, they're like marbles that just, it wants to roll around. Uh, unlike this stuff, it doesn't really want to do that. And I have here, just for comparison, wet version. So this is the wet. You can see it wants to click, uh, stay together here. Well, I think that part is because there's uh, a lot of water on there. I shake it. Let's get the water off. You can, huh? Well, you can see that it's there. Hmm? Uh, a little bit of dust left over, I think, from the container. So this is Samurai, I am Samurai Soil, this is dry, wet. Um, as you can see, let's do the uh, Fluval Stratum here. Even if it's dry form, you can just gently take your finger and just crush it. In the wet form, it, it tends to go down really quickly. It's, it's a clay-like, clay very soft. The Fluval Stratum, I'm sorry, that's the Fluval Stratum. The Samurai soil here in its wet, uh, dry form, right out of the packaging. I mean, I can't, I mean, that, that, that's actually leaving an indent on my finger. You probably the camera's not picking it. Yeah, there we go. And if we take this, you know, I can maybe. Yeah, it did. It it definitely a almost like a ceramic material for sure. Does not want to break apart very easily. It's as a matter of fact, it's leaving holes in the paper. Uh, the wet ver 
the wet ones here. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah, it's even in my under my finger and thumb. It, it does not want to break apart very easily. Let's see. Nope. It is, it does not really want to break apart. It's making I'm gonna get a mess all over the table here. So what do I think? I think that um, this is going to be better for cation exchange between the roots of the plant and the fertilizers. Let's get into that for a moment here, shall we? Um, I'm just going to put this aside. So one of the things that I'm hoping for with the uh, samurai soil is I haven't been able to get much information direct from the manufacturer, but um, what you're looking for, what I look, what I'm hoping, or what I'm looking for is a structure, right? And we could actually do two circles. So if we call this fluval stratum. And this is Samurai. And forgive my spelling here. Um, looking at the structure, what you want is a surface area that can hold negatively and positive charged particles or ions to its surface. And the reason being is this is where such things as the nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, calciums, all of the stuff that you use is going to bond to the surface. So as roots grow by, right, so the plant is up here. This is the crown of the plant. So you get your crown. These are the leaves coming, right? The, the leaves are coming off the plant. And underneath the crown, you've got the roots. So as these roots grow by here, I mean, this is obviously exaggerated, right? These roots, the roots of the plant are going to do an uptake of the nutrients that you are supplying the system in order to produce your growth structure because it's this along with this that's keeping this whole system alive the plant system right so it can carry out uh, co2 to o2 conversion it can grow new leaves stronger roots stronger roots stems Right? There's a lot more to it, obviously, because you've got to deal with your, your light source, right? A little plug in the sun here, just as a little... I'm not an artist by any means. So I think this particular structure from the samurai soil, maybe, I don't know, I have to get some, uh, see if there's any photos online, but a tube-like structure. But if that's the case then what a structure like this, what this is going to allow to happen is the roots not only to grow around the sphere, but through the sphere as well, which would then cause this to fracture. You would get two, right? The same thing, two to four, which increases your surface area for cation, and it increases the surface area exponentially. I don't know for sure, but I think the fluval stratum, I think because it's, it's so soft that its structure may be plate-like, which to me, unless someone out there knows something different, right, that the reason why you see in the bottom of the tank, uh, you see this loam build up 
right? This is all that soft, black, broken down fluval stratum. And on sitting on top of this, you've got this. Your fluval, this is the fluval stratum sitting on top of this. So that's why I think when you go to vacuum out your tank to get rid of the detritus that's maybe building up in your tank, right? And here's the tube. Uh, as you suck this up, the balls go here, right? The little balls of uh, fluval stratum get tumbled up, and then you get that almost this blackish, brownish organic material being sucked out and poured out into a, a whatever container, right? So, you know, it's coming out. But I, as far as plant growth is concerned, I have no problem with this. Plants are flourishing. Um, I don't find that this to be a problem. It's easily controlled. But I think you're definitely getting, right, you're, if you're pulling this out, what, what kind of nutrients are you pulling out? Good ones, bad ones, and different? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see with the flu, uh, samurai soil to see what happens. If this just sits inside... Right? If it's sitting here inside the aquarium, and then you got your plant, again, I'm no artist, are the roots just going to go traveling through here? And if that's the case, because I think this is nutrient rich, whereas I think this is not, and I think this is going to be have to be supplemented, supplemented, right? Uh, bad speller, I admit it, uh, with fertilizers. I don't know. We'll have to see. But that's my take, and that's the reason why. I, one of the reasons why I'm interested in using this is to see what, see how this portion works and to see if it actually I don't think it's going to break down unlike the fluval stratum um, but we'll give it a try Th that that's what this whole series is about